Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Roland Atley. I am a physician assistant, and I'm also an attorney with the Atley Law Firm. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, first, uh, I want to give tribute to all our fallen uh, service members on this Memorial Day. I hope that you all are making the best of the Memorial Day today. Um, also, would like to give out my condolences to all those who have lost someone in this coronavirus pandemic. Uh, right now, the, uh, there are about 1.6 million infected in the United States and approximately approaching 98,000 deaths since the beginning of this pandemic. Uh, New York City has about 198,000 infected and about 16,000 uh, deaths. Uh, the entire New York State has 360,000 infected and approximately 23,000 deaths. Okay, uh, this, this is a very serious matter, of course. This virus is very dangerous, and uh, I'm trying to provide as much information about this virus to uh, my community members and other listeners as I possibly can. Now, this virus is airborne, and that's the uh, very important uh, method for its transmission and why it is so um, infectious. Uh, it, it can also be uh, transmitted uh, from touching a uh, particular surface and, um, and then touching your mouth, nose, or eyes. Uh, it can be transmitted that way. So in addition to social distancing and trying to uh, keep out of uh, crowds, try to keep out of closed spaces with crowds, because at that time the um, the infectious uh, rate of the virus is much higher as opposed to when you're outside in the street. So if you're out in the open and there's no one around you, you really don't need to wear a mask at that time. And I know that it will be difficult for uh, some of you to wear the mask during the uh, upcoming warmer months of the year. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously uh, stressing as best as I can that we continue with the social distancing and wearing of the mask so that we could limit the spread of this virus and we do not have to experience a second wave. Okay, so let's talk about face masks and we're also going to talk about respirators. They're two separate things. First, we're going to talk about the stylistic uh, face mask, all right? And here's one right here. It's a cloth material. Um, it has several layers, so it, it, it could potentially provide quite a bit of protection from uh, breathing in the uh, virus. Um, not sure how uh, well and how much work you will need to use to breathe in uh, through it. And since it won't have that uh, great seal around your nose and face, uh, it, 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 it probably um, will not provide you with um, a high uh, level of filtration um, to prevent you from inhaling the uh, virus if you were to be exposed. Um, <clears throat> but it probably does provide more protection than the surgical mask. So this is a surgical mask. It's pretty thin. Um, and um, this uh, would also be used as well as the stylistic mask. Um, and those masks, again, they really do not provide uh, much in the way of protection. But what they do provide is, is that they prevent you from touching your your a surface and then touching your nose or your 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 mouth because that mask will ask will ask as a physical uh, barrier to remind you that you should not be doing so. But you may still touch your eyes, of course, unless you're wearing glasses or something like that, where you'd have to take them off to do so, and that might remind you that you shouldn't be doing so because you haven't yet washed your hand if that was the actual scenario. So you have the uh, you have the stylistic mask and then you have the surgical mask. Um, and I, again, I wanna say that those are not respirators. Now let's go into the respirators. Okay, we have the regular respirators and one that you guys most commonly know about is called the N95. Now the, um, the, the N is for non-oil-based um, filtration. It doesn't provide any filtration of oil-based materials. Um, so that's why it has the N. Um, there's also um, uh, 
a category of R, which is uh, restrictive, so it will restrict some oil-based uh, films on particles, uh, but uh, it won't uh, provide complete uh, uh, resistance. Uh, there's the, um, the P rating, which is the oil proof. Uh, that one has the uh, highest filtration uh, against oil. They all provide um, filtration of particles. Uh, the, the N95 provides about 95% close to that of filtration of small particles. Uh, then you have the N100. Uh, you have the P100. And I guess you can also have the R100. I've never seen both. Every country has a different rating system. Uh, which is approved by the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. They approve the mask. And you always want to find, you always want to use a mask that has the uh, NIOSH approval attached to it. Okay. Um, now, when you, when you use the, um, the mask, uh, you, you need to press around the nose so you can get a good seal and make sure you have a good seal all around. Um, those of you who wear the mask and you have your nose exposed, people are trying to use comedic tactics to get you to wear the mask properly by saying that if you're wearing the mask with your nose exposed, it's like wearing your underwear with your exposed. Um, so, <laughs> you know, that is one way of doing it, but I would like to take a more scientific approach here. All right, now um, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, go into the, uh, fit testing of these masks. These masks, you shouldn't know how to test them to know that you have a good seal. Um, there are uh, liquid chemicals uh, that you can use. Uh, one is a uh, glucose base and the other one is a acetate base. It smells like a banana. Um, you can either taste it or smell it. If the mask is working properly, you won't taste it nor will you smell it. So that's how you could tell that the mass is working properly. Now, most people are not going to go through the, 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 the burden of testing the mass. They're just gonna put it on um, if they really want to get the protection to make sure that it's pretty safe, okay? Um, now, the mask. Sorry, had a technical difficulty there. These masks, uh, these masks have multiple layers. And um, they also have an electrostatic, you know, like when your clothes uh, cling to one another. They need that, that kind of electrostatic uh, property in order to be able to filter out the small particles. Okay, and they're not designed, they're not designed for reuse. Okay, um, so here's uh, some of the uh, N95 masks. And as you can see here, um, it says um, NIOSH. Here, right on that part right there, you should be able to see that. Um, and here are some other ones. Um, again, they will say the N95. This one says 3M. Um, it doesn't specifically say the NIOSH approval right here on the front. Um, the other ones here, here's another one. This one actually has the NIOSH approval. And... This again is the N95 uh, mask holding it uh, up right now. And here's the nose piece here that you have to press to make sure that you get the good seal. Okay, there's also this other one here, uh, which comes in a different style. It's like it sticks out like a duck beak. Um, that's another style that you could use too. There are various different styles. Again, this one I wanna make note of the uh, filter right here in the front. I'm gonna speak about that a little bit later on. Okay, so those are your, your, your uh, N95, your regular N95 mask that provides you with about 95% filtration rate uh, for, for use. Um, they're not made for reuse. Um, they, they're just made, they're designed to be worn once and then thrown away. Okay, uh, so uh, those masks, um, you have to reuse them because you don't have a choice. Well, you 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 really just um, that's what you have. You have to you have to uh, reuse them. Um, now we have going on to the respirator, the elastomeric one, uh, the kind of gas mask looking one here, with the with the two uh, filters here on each end. Okay, and you put it on this way. 
um, it has another valve here so that you could breathe out of it, okay? Um, this one has a very nice rubbery seal, and um, you could also put maybe some of the surgical mask material. So in addition to the filter, because um, it does have this valve here, right in the middle, see this valve right there, to allow you to breathe out, um, and you could cover it with some with one of the um, the surgical mask material so that there's some kind of a filtration when you breathe out. Now, I'm going to show you why that's important. Um, now, these masks come in the, uh, in, with uh, the filters, come different uh, filters, N95 or P100. Um, uh, so you have, you have, you have all of these uh, various um, uh, uh, makes and models of this type of elastomeric uh, respirator. Uh, they are made for reuse. So you could just clean them off when you're done and they're ready to go. Um, now, they do have this exhale valve as I was just showing you. Um, and I showed you the other respirator here with the, the valve on it. The thing is, when you, when you breathe in through and you breathe out through this, these other types here, right, it's sometimes hard to breathe in and to breathe out as well. And it traps moisture um, and heat. So they tend to become so uncomfortable because of that. And sometimes if they're not fitted properly, they could cause abrasions of the face and so forth. We'll speak about that in a minute. Um, but the main thing with those is that when you breathe out with those valves, you could actually breathe out the virus. So those people who were standing around you could actually breathe in the virus if you were infected when you take a, bre a breath out or when you're talking. Um, but having that valve makes the, uh, the mask uh, easier to breathe through. There's less resistance. There's less work that you would have to do to breathe. Um, it, doesn't con it, doesn't, it doesn't contain, it doesn't keep in the, um, the moisture and the heat. And it also limits the amount of carbon dioxide that you will be rebreathing. Uh, because one of the complaints that people have about wearing these masks for a long time is that they may feel lightheaded or get dizzy. So that, that's one of the benefits of having the mask, but uh, having the valve there to exhale through that valve. But on the other end, um, you, 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 you should put something either over this mask or in between on the inside of this one so that you have some kind of filtration. Um, in California, they pretty much have banned the respirator, respirators with the valve. Uh, because those people wearing them, if they're infected, they can still um, spread the virus through the breathing, exhaling through uh, that valve. Um, so um, just be mindful of that and put one of the surgical masks over it um, this way uh, and, and try not to touch that mask. If you could wear two masks, I mean, that's a lot asking for you to wear two masks instead of just one. But um, the reason for that is when you're wearing a mask, you must know that the coronavirus can survive on the respirator or, or anyone in a stylish mask for up to seven days on the outside of the mask and about four days on the inside of the mask. So you have to regularly monitor and clean uh, off the mask as, as much as you can. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about um, how to decontaminate to get rid of the coronavirus on the mask um, very soon. Um, <clears throat> now, there are complications to wearing uh, these masks. Now, sometimes they can be hard to breathe through. Uh, everyone's different, so some will find it more difficult than others. Um, you breathe in your CO2 uh, because it's sort of trapped inside the mask, so that may cause you to be dizzy or to get lightheaded or to have those other symptoms. Uh, some patients, uh, some people have fainted as a result of doing this. So when you're inside a car, you definitely do not need to keep your, uh, your, your, your respirator mask on. Um, if it's too tight, you could develop facial abrasions if you're wearing it very frequently. And again, as I said, the outside uh, coronavirus could survive there for about seven days and on the inside of the mask for about four days. Um, so uh, be mindful of that. And if you can wash your mask, if it's one of the stylistic masks, please do so. Um, I, will, I will give you uh, uh, one of the um, uh, things that I've learned 
in terms of uh, decontaminating the mass so that you can safely reuse it without having that uh, massive amount of contamination of coronavirus on the mask. All right, now, um, if you have a respiratory problem or you have any kind of breathing problems, uh, and you're gonna go outside, you're gonna need some kind of protection. So if you can't wear the mask, then it's best that you not go anywhere and you stay inside. That would be the best advice that I could give to you. Now, um, speak with your doctor and see what your doc advise. Uh, what would it, what the doc what your doctor would advise you to do if you really need to go out so that you could uh, take uh, your the necessary precautions as best you can given your medical problems okay so let's now move on to uh, decontamination of the mask okay um, now remove the uh, removing um, the mask from your face when you do so um, try to um, to have your hands washed because you want to eliminate the amount of your touching of the outside of that mask. Now it does help you um, because otherwise you would be touching your face and your, 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 your lip or your nose or something like that. So um, try not to touch the mask and with, until you've washed your hands so that you don't reuse the mask and have it contaminated with coronavirus until you're able to decontaminate the mask to limit the amount of virus on the mask. Now that's gonna be hard for some of you to do because you don't wanna wear the mask in the first place and when you go out, you, you just can't be um, too careful. Uh, it's a bit, it's requiring you to be extremely careful and you, you, have, you, you don't want that to be like the, the, the only thing that you're really focused on when you're going out there to handle your business and so forth. I understand that part, but please try your best not to touch the outside of the mask because sometimes you'll touch a surface and then touch your mask and now you've contaminated your mask and if you're going to continue to use it you have to be careful so that you don't get in, get yourself infected now the mask as we said before it has several layers and it has the electrostatic um, uh, mechanism uh, property to allow the mask to filter small particles now to reuse the mask and clean it um, you there are thir certain things that you could use certain chemicals that you could use to do it but you can't use all of these things at home. You could use hydrogen peroxide, but that would require specialized equipment. It could, it's very dangerous, so that's not practical for home. UV light is not practical for, for, for use at home because the type of UV light that you would need is damaging to your skin, okay? You could use dry heat, but that also, like a blow dryer, but that also could damage the mask. Um, one of the best ways that I've found that you, where you could decontaminate the mask is to cover it in a Ziploc container, something that could withstand like about 195 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, put about a two by two uh, uh, inch piece of uh, uh, soaked um, uh, paper towel inside uh, the, the container and use a convection oven with a fan in it um, and put the, um, the, the mask in there with the container for about an hour. Um, and they've shown that that is a very good and effective way of decontaminating the mask and it, it, it's workable at home. So if you have one mask and you want to decontaminate it, that's the way that you would do it, okay? Um, so I, I don't really want to say uh, much more about the hydrogen peroxide and these other things. Um, I think uh, at this point now, I, I want to say to you again, that um, you should wear the mask as much as you possibly can, especially if you're gonna be uh, outside in the area where you're gonna encounter a number of people. Whether or not they're using their mask, you should wear yours to protect yourself. If both of you are using uh, uh, a mask, then you're protecting the entire community by preventing transmission because that is the most effective way uh, in, 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 to protect yourself and others uh, by using uh, by using a mask, um, at at this point now, um, if anyone has any questions that I could see on here uh, right now, I will try to answer them. If you have any, I'll just leave a few moments for you to ask any questions. Well, it appears uh, that we're not really 
uh, getting uh, many questions coming in at this point. Um, so I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. And uh, we will uh, uh, hopefully uh, repost this. Uh, and, uh, and hopefully you will share this uh, with others if you found the information useful. Um, and I hope that we could prevent uh, some coronavirus infections uh, with this uh, video and encourage more people uh, to use the mask in trying to uh, do their part in decreasing the amount of the coronavirus infection. Thank you all. I really appreciate everyone. Enjoy the rest of the Memorial Day. Thank you.